Did you get a sense of why the, why the crowd was so thin compared to the Democrat speakers? I'll tell you why. There's a term in Yiddish, and the term is nisht visendik. Nisht visendik in Yiddish means willingly not knowing. Don't tell me, I don't want to hear it. They refuse to come here because they're fearful of being told the truth. They know they are wrong. These people here are basically are Jewish people. They know they are wrong. They know that Keith Ellison is a Jew hater. They know Huma Abedin was Muslim Brotherhood. They know they did not want to come here and face the truth. They didn't have the balls. Can I use that term? Because if if they were confronted with it, what would have happened? I mean, what, what would they, that force them to do? They would not have slept, and they would not have gone home and had dessert. They would be so upset. They would be so disturbed. It's just like finding out that your son or daughter did something terrible. <clears throat> they do not want to know, and they are ignorant because of that. This is willing ignorance. If I don't know something, I'm going to run home and look it up on the encyclopedia, on my internet, or on my dictionary. But I will not say, I don't want to know. How, did, how does the reaction that you got tonight compare to the reaction you get in other places you speak? Basically the same, except there was no vitriol because uh, these people are well behaved. But they didn't believe half of what I said, and they wouldn't go home to check me out. If I was sitting in the audience and uh, the person was speaking to me and I didn't believe what he or she said, I would run home, check it on the internet, and demand that that person come back the next week and face, face reality. Well, I'm willing, if they find something that I said that was wrong, I'm willing to come back next week and apologize. I'm open. I'm open. And I told them that I was a Democrat at one time, and I know exactly what they're going through. Don't tell me what I don't want to hear. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Don't tell me to watch Fox News. Don't tell me to read the Wall Street Journal. Don't tell me to go on the internet. I will only go in the things that are comfortable. It's like eating in a restaurant. I don't want to try a new restaurant. I just want to eat in the same old restaurant. You pointed out the Sun Sentinel did not mention uh, this, the current scandal of the Obama administration uh, illegally eavesdropping on Trump and, uh, yeah. um, and, and what was revealed there. It wasn't published in the Sun Sentinel. Can you, uh, can you absolve the, the people's ignorance because the Sun Sentinel doesn't deliver no. it to them? No. If, if, if I'm watching television and I switch to Fox News and I hear that Susan Rice made statements a week ago and now that contradict one another, I'd look for more facts. And I would run to the Sun Sentinel, I wouldn't read it, I would stop my circulation with that newspaper. But these people don't have that, uh, not intelligence, they're intelligent people. I couldn't afford to live in this development. They the are, I'm sorry? They don't, have, they don't have the initiative to they do it? They want to. They don't want to be disturbed. It's like, I, I, have, I have a growth. I have a growth in my, in my chest, it's, it's popping out. I don't want to go to the doctor because he'll tell me bad news. So I'd rather live with it. And they're willing to live with their ignorance. I hate to make that sort of uh, comparison. They're willing to live with their ignorance because if they found out the truth, the whole world would be shattered. And here, if they come out and speak as a conservative, they're kicked out of the card game and into the pool. They lose their whole social life. Really? You bet your life. They, they wouldn't be played cards with. They, the golf game would be shot they would be looked at as morons. You're a moron, you're a Republican, you're a moron. This is what happens in these gated These gated communities would say to me in my talk, if I mentioned about building a wall, they would say, we don't need a wall. We don't want a wall. So I say, so why, when I came in here, I had to show an ID, <clears throat> and you have a massive wall around this development. Why do you have a wall to protect yourself from outsiders and criminals? But we shouldn't have them in the country. It doesn't make sense. Why do you speak at these kinds of events if you find that there's social pressures inhibiting people from accepting your information? Why I speak? Yeah. I enjoy it. Oh. <clears throat> I, <laughs> I get a lot of pleasure out of telling people the truth. I don't say you're wrong. I say I am giving you the truth. I'm giving you an opportunity to learn the truth. And if you don't believe me, ask me questions. But when you ask me a question, I say to them, don't tell me just because <clears throat> I don't know it, it's not the truth. 
I didn't read it in the New York Times, MSNBC didn't say it, CNN didn't say it, I didn't hear NPR say it, PBS. I speak to them because it's a challenge to me. It's a challenge to me, and I love it. Is there a challenge for you to get these speaking engagements from these uh, condo communities? You bet your us. Yeah? You bet. <clears throat> I'm ostracized from a couple of communities. I can't speak in many temples. Of course, I'll go in against the rabbis who are J Street rabbis, basically anti-Israel rabbis. It's, I'm finding it harder and harder to get speaking engagement. And I am the only one, and this is a sad commentary on my part, I am the only one in South Palm Beach County who is doing this. The only one. It's how, how did the revelations about uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and the c conspiring, uh, uh, not only against uh, Bernie, Bernie Sanders, Sanders. But, uh, but also uh, against Israel and the, and the Iran uh, nuclear JCPOA, how did, they, uh, influ how did they affect one way or the other uh, attitudes towards uh, re-electing her? They don't care. If I went into her district in... Uh, Fort Lauderdale, wherever she is, and I said to them, look at this, she's a J Street person, she, she belongs to J Street, first of them, half of them don't know what J Street is, uh, she, is she started a Muslim Democrat club in Broward County, run by a care executive, a Jew-hating executive, they would say, so what, look at the good she does. Now if I say to them, what good does she do, they say, well, we don't know, <laughs> she's a Democrat. Yeah, put, I, 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 this is a joke. If Joseph Goebbels were alive today and he ran on the Democrat ticket, he would win. In fact, they scream at me because they say, you're saying Democrat club, Demo it's Democratic club. I say, no, it's not. A Democratic club is where everyone can speak his or her piece and not be ostracized or banished or yelled at. Democrat clubs don't permit the opposite side. They, they don't permit it. They're basically, and I'm going to say this word, fascistic. The Democrat Party is fascistic. Uh, how clearly or strongly are the Republicans uh, or conservatives getting that message across that, that the former Democrat Party has been hijacked by the left? Well, <clears throat> I talk mainly to Democrats, and they refuse to hear it. Look at today. They didn't come here today, right? Uh, they had over a hundred people for uh, Professor Watson and for Rabbi Silva. They didn't come out to me today. And tomorrow they'll be sitting together over their breakfast or lunch and they'll talk about how crazy I was. And the people who are not here will take that as fact and say, well, this Bergstein guy is crazy. I want to come back again and debate a Watson or a Barry Silva in front of these people and let them hear both sides. But today, them not coming out, am I disappointed? Sure, I'm disappointed. But uh, uh, was, was I unaware that this was going to happen? Of course not. I knew this was going to happen. I, I would like them to come out and hear. Listen, if a Democrat was speaking here and I lived here, I would surely come out and blast him. I would blast him with the facts. But they don't have the strength, the moral strength, nor do they have the guts to stand up to reality. I give credit to the people who spoke out against me tonight. Even if he accused uh, Breitbart News, discredited them and, and called uh, and, and quoted uh, uh, fake news for Fox News? You see, my shirt is peach. No matter what I say, that shirt is not going to change its color to green or to blue. Talking to these people is not going to change their <clears throat> their method of thinking. They are basically, in a sense, under the fascist ideology of what they say is right and no one is going to change their mind. When I told them in the beginning that I was a Jewish umbilical cord Democrat, I told them that I had somehow matured. I want them to mature. It's too late, of course, for them to mature. But I have to keep banging away. But are there many who uh, think like you and, and need the reinforcement that they're not crazy? There are many in the audience today, but they're afraid to speak up. Of course, if they spoke up, they would find out the hostility of being a conservative Republican in a very liberal community. They know where their bread, which side of the bread uh -huh. is buttered. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
you say in a conservative, uh, in a liberal community, but where of uh, there are hundreds of communities here. How many are not liberal? I mean, what percent? Uh, right now, I say zip. Zip in Brooklyn means none. There are no liberal. There are, there are no conservative communities here. There is no community like this. I, I, on the on the on the conservative side, liberal communities dominate totally and completely. There are no conservative communities in, in, on the east coast of South Florida. I don't know. All I can talk about <clears throat> is Boca, Delray, Boynton Beach, and Lake Worth. There are no communities that are overtly conservative. None. How about 50-50? Absolutely not. I would love it to be 50-50. I would love it to be 50-50. Uh, a good thing for you to do is to go to communities like uh, Boca Point, Million Dollar Homes, Boca Grove, Boca West, uh, other communities, the Valencias. Valencia Reserve just formed a conservative club. They couldn't call it a Republican club because they'd be thrown out. And yet there's pressure to get them out. Valencia Palms. Valencia Palms had to close this Ronald Reagan club because of the pressure. People do not want to put their necks out on the line. If I lived in an apartment house in New York, I wouldn't give a damn. There'd be 200 other people and I'd live my own life. The life in this gated community is spent within this community. 60% of their life is spent in this community. Playing cards, walking, chatting, playing golf, swimming by the swimming pool. And if they lose their friends here, they're gone. And if, if they come out with uh, a conservative or, or non-liberal progressive points of view? They're looked at as morons, as sick people. In your discussion, your, your arguments for Donald Trump, you didn't mention Israel or his Middle East po policy much. No, I didn't. No. I didn't. Uh, I wanted to get to the basics of their lives. Israel, of course, he was the, the largest contributing Gentile to Israel, as far as money is concerned. He was the greatest supporter of Israel financially as a Gentile in this whole country. His kids are either all married to or going with Jews. His daughter, Ivanka, is, is Orthodox. She's raising the kids Orthodox. They're trying to paint Donald Trump as anti-Semitic, which is crap. There's no such thing. He never... In fact, Netanyahu was thrilled. Mm -hmm. had, had, had Hillary won, Israel would have a lifespan now of five years, if Hillary had won. Morsi came to, uh, to Washington, D.C. to meet Trump. Mm -hmm. Trump says, I'm supporting you militarily. Hillary would have thrown, her down the two, thrown him down the tubes because of Huma Abedin, who's Muslim Brotherhood. Hillary and, and Huma Abedin put Mohammed Morsi in as president of Egypt. It's Muslim Brotherhood. Do you feel that uh, American Jews dodged a bullet in, in this uh, underdog victory of Donald Trump? What do you mean by dodge a bullet? In other words, that things m would have been much worse for Israel and, and for uh, Islamic anti-Semitism in America? And, and for us, too. And for us, too. Hillary Clinton, uh, Huma Abedin, is Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, she would have imported 200,000 Iraqis into this country, or Syrians, Iraqis and Syrians, or, or whatever they call We don't know who they are. We don't know who these people are. They don't have backgrounds to check. They're coming in cold. It's like letting rats off the ship. I hate to make that comparison. She would have destroyed the United States. And well, I didn't tell these people that there is a House resolution proposed by the Democrats, I think it's 569, to condemn anti-Muslim rhetoric and to basically make it a hate crime, Muslim, anti-Muslim rhetoric. I wouldn't tell them that because that would have been over the top. They would have plots. They would have fallen off their chairs. They would have called me a liar. When you know too much and you try to give it to these people who've been indoctrinated for years that Republicans are Jew haters, what have you, they rebel. They, they go into a frozen state. They become... Uh, Catatonic. Don't these uh, retirees in this area, as Jews themselves, have the most to lose by bringing in this new uh, far left into the, 
into the Democrat Party? Not only them, not only they, but their grandchildren who are going to college, who are getting the crap wiped out of them at the colleges with the Students for Justice and the Power. But they don't care, because if they speak out, they'll be going against the mainstream Democrats. The professors, 98% of them are Democrats, and they're condemning Israel. Boycott, divestment, and sanctions program is huge in the colleges. And their grandchildren are going there. They're afraid to say they're Jewish. But they don't know that. They don't want to know that. Don't tell me, I don't want to know. Are there problems at the local universities because of this uh, pro-Palestinian leftism? Are you kidding? Florida Atlanta University had two major incidents where the Students for Justice in Palestine had posters put up on doors, uh, uh, eviction notices, and then they put white plastic bags with ketchup on top, and they said those are the, the Palestinian babies that the Israelis killed. And you know what the University of uh, Florida Atlantic University did? They authorized those uh, posters with their stamp, and they sent a university person around with them to give them credence on the campus. And do you know the woman who ran the Students for Justice in Palestine thing, this uh, basic hatred of Jews? She won the Student of the Year Award when she was graduated at FAU. She was given the Student of the Year Award. So how can, FAU. So how can South Florida, which is such a prominently, a disproportionately large Jewish community, stand for this? Why do the Jews in New York City stand for Mayor de Blasio? Why do they stand for him being a mayor? because basically they are uneducated politically, they're not sophisticated politically, and they are, they are ideologues. Ideology means more than reality, even if it hurts me. Even if it hurts me and my grandchildren, I'll stick with the Democrats. I told them about Keith Ellison. Half of that, these people don't believe me, they think I'm crazy. They think I'm crazy. They say, well, he's only second in charge.